Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you an extremely easy and efficient dev setup that you don't even need to set up yourselves. This is using Claude Code, effectively, right? And you will need to tell Claude Code to set everything up for you. If you're on Windows, make sure that on Docker you go to Resources here, WSL Integration, and make sure that you have Docker turned on on WSL, right? That's the main thing that you need. Now the system that we're going to be creating is a three-tiered system. Now I don't know how far I'm, I'm probably not going to make production in this video. I'll probably make dev just to show you guys and I'll show you local host. So there's three parts to this. There is a Docker container, which is a mirror of a digital ocean app or droplet, depending on what you're building. So basically what happens is when you actually launch the project, you're launching the project directly on a compatible system rather than confusing things by having a few different systems. So I'm going to be using a couple of MCPs and I'm going to be using Claude code. I'm not going to be going into detail on how to actually use these necessarily. But I mean, I've just streamed for 30 hours on using these. So if you want to know how to use them, definitely check out the streams. But if I do slash MCP here, should have some connected DigitalOcean. That will do. That's all I actually really need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, please make me the following, I want a Docker setup, which is mirrored, which mirrors a digital ocean setup, i.e. same Ubuntu, etc. So that I can do local dev and have an online dev server. Just do Python and Flask, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. It's just an example for a video I'm making, so get on with it, Mike. Um, you also have access to Docker in the terminal and the Digital Ocean MCP to launch the project. Okay, so we'll just say this. Now, a couple of notes on this system. If you have different systems, make sure you have different databases, okay? Now, programmers always say things like this, but they don't really explain why. But you actually need, and if you're using something like Uptash, I'm going to assume that what people want to make has some kind of automated system in it, considering we're building with AI. In order to do that, you need a cache of like those tasks that you want it to run. The way that you do that is with something like Uptash. Again, same thing. You need your Redis, which is just Uptash, Redis, uh, Uptash just hosts Redis, basically. You need each one of your environments to have separate ones of these. Otherwise, you will have things like your local host sending tasks to your production server, which is what was happening to me. Okay, so let's just follow this along so you guys can watch what's actually happening here. So it's going to create a Flask application, it's going to create a Docker file, it's going to create a Docker Compose, test Docker setup locally, deploy to DigitalOcean, right? It's that simple. And then we're going to be using GitHub, obviously, so I'll, I'll make sure to tell it to use GitHub as well. And then what you can do is you can have your GitHub dev, right, on here. So this is dev on localhost, or it's localhost, it's not actually on GitHub necessarily. This is dev. And then this is main. So you have three different branches. So you, you make a change locally, you test it, you push it to dev, which pushes to DigitalOcean, and then you push that to, um, to main, basically. So you can see here that that's basically what's happening right now. It's just creating a Docker um, container. This is all stuff I learned in the last 24 hours, last 48 hours, and teaching you guys things as I go. As you may have seen, I've been live streaming the creation of this now frankly breathtaking dashboard that I've created which allows people to basically automate their Shopify stores um, and yeah it like creates collections it does translations uh, it adds alt tags and it even has like a search console feature as well so this is what I have created using the system that I'm I'm kind of giving to you guys today this was uh, a lot of help from people in the live stream chat that were helping me. So shout out to those guys, especially Kenrick, who has been helping a lot. Now, one thing that is really, really cool about this is once you've got this dev branch here, 
right? You can pull your code at any time. You have a stable dev branch. And then what you can do is you can make a new branch at the beginning of a coding session, which is on localhost, obviously. You make changes, and then if you like the changes, you push them to dev, right? And if you don't like the changes, you just revert back to dev, right? So you always have a beautifully stable coding system and you can just branch out and, you know, make different things and experiment with vibe coding and all that good stuff. And then if you don't like it, you just revert back to dev, right? This was the missing link that I, I kind of didn't have at the time uh, or didn't have. So I'm going to show you kind of how this works. Okay, so it just curled the server, right? It just made the server. So now if I go to localhost 8080, right? Localhost 8080, you'll see that I can play around with this. I can change stuff. I could change this to say something different very easily. And then literally, once you're happy with it locally, you push it to dev and then that goes to the live one, which is I'm, I'm about to show you guys how that works, right? So this is almost done. Let me create a production ready Docker file for DigitalOcean. The cool thing is, is a lot of these, like when you have localhost, dev, and main, right? And you have these three different things. Everything else can be exactly the same, right? It's literally just you have these three different things here. The database one, database two, so uh, local data. I, I actually, I'm using, um, for this one here, the localhost, I'm just using the dev database. I think that's fine. Just be careful with cache, because if you're caching stuff and you have three different systems using the same cache, you're going to have problems like I did. Trust me. So right here, it's creating a GitHub thing. Um, my WSL has access to GitHub, right? So Docker has access. WSL or Claude Code, right, has access to Docker commands. Just It just knows how to do the commands, right? And it has access to GitHub, right? And earlier, if you watched the video earlier, I gave it access to Puppeteer. This system here can self-improve all day long. That's one T, I think. While you sleep, right? It's such a good system. Okay, so we can see here, it's now been launched. If I just go on DigitalOcean, remember, I haven't done anything, right? This is all just from uh, terminal stuff, right? And bang, look, Flask Docker demo, right? And then look, Okay, so that didn't work. So I won't stop recording. I did pause it there because it didn't work, but I'll make sure that you guys can see everything. Something is stopping this from, from running. This is incorrect. It should look exactly like this. So I'll just say that all I see is the Nginx login page. And I just gave it the uh, the logs from DigitalOcean you can see here, runtime logs. It's pretty easy to do the, the logs part. The, the complicated part is adding the right app and stuff. Okay, so it used the wrong image for some reason. I don't know what it is. I feel like Claude Opus has got stupider in the last, um, in the last week since they launched. It's been a week and a bit now, right? I honestly feel like it's got stupider. It's very frustrating that companies do that. So this is now deleted. This will no longer exist if I refresh this. There we go. It has to launch it on G-Unicorn. I don't know why it couldn't work that out for itself. And then I'll show you guys this entire process in just a second. We're almost there. Now, the only other part of this is you just do what I just did, but you do it one more time so that you have a, a prod database. Because obviously, if you're working on a live website that people are using, you can't afford to bring it down constantly, right? So you need to make sure that this is always like 99.99% of the time stable. But you can work on dev as much as you want. And dev and main are exactly the same thing. It's just dev, if it, if it goes down or if, if you lose this and you lose this, as, as long as you still have prod and it's working, nothing else really matters, right? That's kind of why devs are so obsessed with this kind of stuff. So let's see if this worked. Hasn't pushed anything yet. Okay, so we can see here, here's the Flask um, app. You don't have to use Flask, you can use whatever you want. You can use Next.js, whatever. Um, I just use Flask, um, I'm using Flask in my project and it's just kind of simple and easy, so. Now, what I don't get is where is the actual GitHub code? 
I'm kind of confused by that. I don't actually know where, where the code is. So I think what I have to do is, for some reason, it can't really make them on test, test video. It can't make repos very easily. Um, I think there's kind of an issue with, I don't know exactly, but I'll just say that I, I, I made a new repo. Okay, so let's see, this should be done now. It shouldn't even take this long. I don't know why the hell it's taking this long. Okay, so you can see here it's now committing the code here. There's a little problem with the uh, G-Unicorn or whatever the hell it's called. Don't know why the, all these coders are so obsessed with unicorns, but... Okay, there we go. Successful launch. <laughs> okay, so you can see here now we have this uh, website, which is on a digital ocean um, domain. So what we can do now is I'll show, I'll show you the kind of final process of this, right? So... Okay, great. Thanks, mate. One more thing. Make... Uh, let's start a new branch uh, called new feature and then add uh, some more information. Can be random underneath the button so I can see it in local host, right? So it makes a new branch, right? And then we start coding. And then if we like the new code, we push it. If it breaks something and we can't fix it, we go back. That's literally, that's literally it. And obviously Claude code will do all of this for you. Claude desktop, whatever, doesn't matter what you're using. It'll, it'll do all of this for you, right? I'm not actually running commands you can see here. So what, let's watch this process, right? What this is gonna do is this is gonna push this to local host. So let's just go local host, I think it was 8080. You can see we have the changes here, but the changes are not here, right? So we say, okay, I like these changes. Sure, let's update the CSS, whatever. Bang, amazing, beautiful. This is the best project I've ever seen, right? But the reason you want this on local host 8080, by the way, is because if you need to change a feature, the alternative is to push it to dev and then wait for it to build every time, which is going to take three minutes or something. So here it's instant, right? Server time, 934, beautiful. Okay, relax, you can uh, stop now, that's fine. It was just a little, whatever. Okay, I love this new feature, now merge. Uh, with the dev branch, if we called it dev branch, or you should say dev branch here. We don't have a dev branch, so uh, the main, or I can just say, you, you should say now merge with dev, right? This is what you guys should say, but I'm just going to say now push to uh, prod. What this will now do is it'll push the code to GitHub, and then pretty quickly we'll see the exact same thing happen, right? So you can see here it's doing a git commit. And then it'll do a git push. So it's on the main branch. You should be pushing to dev, which will push it to your dev instance. I'm skipping that step just because I don't want to spin up two um, DigitalOcean environments just for a test video, right? So now you have the new feature branch, you have your dev branch, and you have your main branch, right? So the, the, the local host is like the new feature branch. The dev on DigitalOcean is the dev branch and the prod is the prod branch, right? That's how it works. So only when you've seen that it works on dev should you then push it to prod. And prod and dev should have exactly the same environment as well. Just, uh, and exactly the same database, but with different, um, but different databases. So the exact same database, but not the exact same database credentials, right? So it should have the same structure, but not the same actual database. You shouldn't use prod and dev in the same database, as I was saying at the beginning of the video. So once this is done, we'll see that this is localhost, and then if I refresh this a few times, it'll be done soon. It's just building. And then we see that we, on our main branch or dev branch or whatever staging server, you have the updates. So that's what I've been doing recently, guys. This is a super, super good uh, pipeline for you to work in.
And yeah, thank you so much for watching, guys. If you're watching all the way to the end of the video, you're an absolute legend. And I will see you very, very, very soon with some more content. Peace out.